welcome everyone. I'm so excited about this new journey of my YouTube premium membership. And if you're watching this video, you are one of my members. You're one of my entrepreneurship members. Thank you so much for joining. Today, we're going over a buyer's package. You also have access to the buyer's package to download and follow along with us. So make sure you do that. Take full advantage of every resource possible, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Of course, the first thing we always do is ID the signer, okay? So I have their identification here. I verify they are who they say they are. I verify that their name matches the loan documents. I also make sure to record their information in my notary journal, okay? Make sure to do that every um, pertinent form of information like their driver's license, number, expiration date, all that good stuff and um, make sure you're recording every line item for every form that you notarize in the loan package, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is a purchase. First thing we have here is the settlement statement. So this is gonna outline all the fees associated with your new loan, your sales price, all your loan charges, any impounds, your government recording fees, and this is the amount that's due from you. So I'm sure you've already wired that, or if not, I can provide the wire instructions, okay? And then you go ahead and sign there. Okay, and then these are your escrow instructions, okay? So go ahead and initial there. Okay, and if you have your insurance information, fill it out here. If not, we can handle that later. I don't have it. Okay, that's fine. All right. Okay, and then you're going to sign where it says buyer and then put your mailing address. Okay, next, these are your escrow provisions. So you're just going to sign here where it says buyer. And this form just states that there might be a delay in recording your deed due to COVID-19. Okay. There may be some delays with the county recorder's office, okay? So just sign here. Your loan, I just want to mention your loan will disperse the same. It's just the title might be a bit delayed, okay? This is your grant deed, granting the property over to you as the new owner, okay? Now the grant deed, um, I just want to point out really quick, the signer is going to be, um, the seller is going to be signing that portion, granting the property over to the new owner. So the buyer typically does not have to sign the grant deed. So you just zoom past that, okay? And then now uh, we're going to get to the preliminary change of ownership form. The preliminary change of ownership form, you all, is always included on all purchases. You want to guide the borrower through the preliminary change of ownership form. Do not set this form in front of them for them to figure out for themselves. You need to guide them through that. If you do not, the signing will take you forever. I do have a whole separate video on the PCOR, the preliminary change of ownership form. So please reference that. I also want to point out the example that I'm referencing is um, specific to California. Although I know other states have similar forms, this form that I, the example of the form that I have for you is for California, okay? So I always just kind of go over this with the buyer. Actually, I kind of help them with it. So this, your email address is already referenced, so don't worry about that. And um, the property is your primary residence, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have a move-in date? You, you, you can kind of estimate. Yeah, uh, February 1st. Okay, so we're just gonna put February 1st, and then here you wanna put your name and your mailing address, okay? While they're working on that, I'll go ahead and start filling in the information on the second page for them just to kind of move things along, okay? The second page is going to ask for like all their purchase information, the purchase price, their interest rate, the term of their loan, uh, whether it's a fixed rate or not, um, whether it's a, it's a single family home, I assume. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have any um, farm equipment, manufactured homes? No. no, okay. And will the property produce rental income? No. Okay, and the property is in good condition? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
This form only requires one signature. So if you have two signers, only one needs to sign. Sign date and put your phone number. hazard disclosure okay so sign and date at the bottom okay. and this is your closing disclosure so this is going to outline the term of your loan okay so it states you have a 30-year fixed rate conventional loan this is your loan amount, your interest rate, your principal and interest. It says you have no prepayment or balloon payment, okay? Your property tax and homeowner's insurance is included here in the totals. Um, this loan has a PMI insurance. So years one through eight, you're looking at this amount and years nine through 30, you're looking at this amount here, okay? These are your closing costs. And then again, this is the amount that you wired, okay? Signature and date is gonna be right here on the fifth page. And then this states that nothing has changed with your income, employment, ability to repay the loan. Okay, so you're going to initial here, and then you're also going to initial here saying nothing's changed with your financial obligations. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it just states that there's no new credit inquiries, um, initial there, and sign date. of your loan application, one signature at the top and initials at the bottom. Right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then on the second page, we're going to initial here. Okay, and then you're gonna initial on the third page there. Initials on the fourth page there. Okay. And then page five, you're going to sign a date. Okay. And then the sixth page, you're going to initial. Okay. And then seven, sign and date there. consent to use your tax return information, sign and date. So this is your errors and admission compliance agreement. Okay, this covers any errors and admissions, or like typos or clerical errors, and then compliance agreement just means that if the lender needs anything further from you to close the loan, that you will comply. Okay, sign a date there. Now here, this is a good example of <clears throat> this particular form needs to be notarized. However, this um, Gerard is not California compliant, okay? So in this situation, you need to make sure to attach the Gerard that is compliant for your state, okay? Okay, so... 
This is your credit disclosure, initials at the bottom. Okay, and then initials at the bottom. you want to indicate your emergency contact, okay? Here, just signature. Okay, and then this next form says that any broker fees were paid by the lender. Okay, you just sign there. Okay, and this is a quality assurance disclosure, sign and date there. And this says if the home is your primary residence, sign and date. And then this is a flood insurance disclosure, sign and date here. I'm completing now the Patriot Act form. So this always needs to be completed. Um, I always default to um, two forms of identification on this form. And again, you'll see this in the sample package that you can download. I always record their driver's license, which is most common. And social security card is really easy because their social security number is there. So I just uh, record the information there, their social security number and um, date of birth. There's no expiration or issue date on social security cards, so you don't need to worry about that. And then you sign and date the second page of the Patriot Act form and always put your title, which is Notary Public, okay? This is your initial escrow and account statement showing everything going into your escrow account for the property tax and insurance. You're gonna sign and date. Okay, signature name affidavit. You're swearing under penalty of perjury that this is your legal name, okay? You're gonna sign to the right here. And this always needs to be um, notarized and it is a giraffe, so make sure that you swear them in under penalty of perjury. And then this says that, oh, this is a general application disclosure, I'm sorry. And then you just sign there. Okay. And this next one is a PMI disclosure. Okay, you're gonna sign the date there. Okay, and this is your first payment letter. So it's gonna cover your principal and interest, any taxes and insurance, okay? And your first payment is due March 1st. Mm -hmm. Sign and date there. Okay, and you do have temporary payment mm -hmm. stubs included in your copy set that I gave you. Mm -hmm. So this is just acknowledging that you received them, okay? So sign and date there. Okay, the per diem interest disclosure, I just wanna point out on the per diem interest disclosure, I never have the signer check any of the boxes here. There will be boxes that gives them choices here. Always let the escrow officer complete this. Um, I just always instruct them, hey, the escrow officer will check the boxes, just sign in date at the bottom, okay? I also wanna mention in very rare circumstances, there are some lenders that 
required that a box has to be checked. In those circumstances, I will go ahead and have them check a box, but that is pretty rare. Typically, the escrow officer can go ahead and make the appropriate selection. I have them do that because the per diem interest disclosure gives two options. It gives the option for the um, disbursement to happen immediately following the next business day, or the next one has a, a little bit of a confusing clause in there to where it can, the loan will disperse following a Monday or Tuesday if that Monday is a bank holiday. And it's just, it gets very confusing for us as the notary signing agent to know how to instruct them on what to choose. The signer is kind of confused on which one to choose. So it's always best to leave it up to the escrow officer because they will know the appropriate box to choose based on when the loan dispersed. So to cut down any confusion in the signing, I just tell them don't check anything, sign a date at the bottom, and they're always okay with that. Okay, so next we have your correction agreement, limited power of attorney. It covers any typos or clerical errors up to 120 days, okay? I'm gonna sign and date here. And the correction agreement does need to be notarized, okay? And this one actually needs a state-specific um, acknowledgement attached. So I would, in this case, attach my own acknowledgement here, okay? This is a waiver of title insurance disclosure. You sign a date there. Okay. And then this is your note, which is your promise to pay the bank back. So it's going to outline your loan amount, the lender, your interest rate, your first payment due date, which is March 1st. It'll also show your last payment, which will be February 1st, 2051. This is letting the signer know that this is a 30 year term, okay? The note is always only gonna show your principal and interest. It says you have no prepayment penalty. The second page goes on to say that you have until the 15th of each month to make your payment. After that time period, you will be assessed a 5% late fee. Then it goes on to talk about what happens if the loan goes into default, okay? okay. You go ahead and sign on the last page. No date, just signature. Okay. Next, we have your title, okay? So go ahead and make sure that the vesting is correct, that your name is spelled correctly, okay? The first page of the deed of trust, I just want to point out, will always have how the property is being vested, whose name will be on the title, whether it's just one person alone or if it's a couple, sometimes it's a group of people. So I always have them verify that their title is correct, that their name is spelled correctly, because this is very important, how their home will be held in title, the title of their property. So always have them verify that on the first on the first page. Everything else is pretty much legal jargon. I go right to the signature page and have them sign. And the deed always has to be notarized, okay? This is a property condition certificate, just sign and date there. And this just states that your lender is United Wholesale Mortgage, okay? You're gonna sign and date on the last page there. Okay. And this is your request for tax transcripts. The box above your signature always needs to be checked and then you sign and date. is your W-9. Okay, just make sure your social security number is correct and then sign it. And the date's already there actually. So just signature on that one. Okay, so lastly, the last thing I always do, and this is just my preference, everybody kind of can find their own way, but last thing I always do is have the signer sign and give me a right thumbprint in my journal for all the forms that I notarize. So I always save that for the, the end of the signing. So at this point, I would have, um, sometimes 
when I first get to the sign in, I've already recorded their identification information on my top line. So I've, I've recorded their name, their driver's license number, expiration date, and all that good stuff. So I'll have it at least on my first line of my notary journal. And then at the end of the signing, I go in and fill in each line item that I've notarized in the package. I make the selection there at the signing very quickly. It, it might take under a minute. And then I instruct them to sign and give me a right thumbprint for each notarization. That is, I'm gonna point out a requirement here in the state of California. I urge everyone to check their state specific requirements as it relates to recording in your notary journal. But that is our requirement here in the state of California. We have to record each notarization in our journal and we have to have a signature and a thumbprint from the signer when it relates to a mortgage transaction okay so that concludes the buyer's signing i hope this was helpful um i welcome all feedback and i will see you in the next video all right bye